Hi, my name is Eric Whitcop. I am a federal SE over at Palo Alto Networks. And today I'm going to talk about how to set up an ELK stack on an Ubuntu host. I happen to be in AWS, but you can do it anywhere, of course. And I'm going to be taking in Palo Alto Pan OS 10.1 logs into my ELK stack. Then I'm going to integrate it with XOR. Now I'll be able to run some automation around events that come through in a syslog format through the ELK application. Now here are a few links that you will be needing as you build out your ELK stack. This video is about how to actually install and configure um, uh, you know, Elastic, Kibana, and uh, a log stash um, combo. And um, so this guy, uh, Antoine, has created um, three different Docker containers for you. you. All you have to do is download them uh, with the git clone command and it's good to go. But you just have to make sure that you get the TLS branch. Okay, he has multiple branches in GitHub. If you want things like alerting and there's going to be other things that you need like API hooks into uh, the platform, things like this, um, you have to have TLS communication between the different containers. And he's done that for you with all kinds of self-signed certs everywhere. It's good to go right out of the box. So you're going to go ahead and just say Docker compose up and then all three come up and, and off you go. From there, you would install FileBeat on the host and I can show you what that looks like. And then um, you're going to need a, a log stash conf file uh, that was going to properly parse threat and traffic logs from Palo Alto and uh, with the proper headings in the columns uh, for the you know KV pairs, right? Shout out to uh, Antoine. He was amazing. Whenever I had a problem, he was there. Um, shout out to Darren uh, Presbitero, uh, who's a co-worker of mine, along with Nicholas Erickson, who was an SA for XOR. Uh, Darren came up with an amazing fix for something that was plaguing me, and we'll get into that in a minute. And Nicholas is Mr. XOR, and he's always awesome. So after you're, you're sitting on your uh, Ubuntu host, you'll just do git clone. Make sure you grab the TLS branch and you're going to grab um, the, the, these uh, files and you'll do Docker compose and done. Then you're going to install FileBeat on the host. Um, there's instructions online how to do that. It's on get the latest and greatest for your uh, version of Ubuntu and your proper architecture. And essentially, FileBeat, the reason we have FileBeat is because there's a PanW module that you're going to want to leverage that has graphs and other cool things to make your Palo Alto logs look great. What's going to happen is you're going to set up a UDP listener for, or, or TCP, uh, for syslog in your FileBeat config file. And that's going to be tied to the host that you're on. Then... Essentially, FileBeat is going to have uh, just a raw socket communication on any TCP port that you choose. And it's going to go back to um, uh, a, a Logstash. And the reason you need Logstash is because it's it, Logstash is essentially syslog ng for the old heads that have been around. It's just a really fancy uh, way of parsing uh, different syslogs and manipulating um, what, pretty much whatever you want. So you have to come over to Logstash to be able to chop up things the way you want, okay? And uh, I learned a lot of different lessons here. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, so I said make sure you get the TLS branch uh, for the containers. Um, there is um, an alteration that you have to make in the integration for Elastic V2 inside of XOR. You have to change this format of um, the, your, your uh, at timestamp value that needs to get parsed. And you'll notice that we put a JZ on the end. That's your difference. Um, if you don't do this, the fetching will fail uh, inside the integration. So to make note of that. Um, and uh, I'm talking to the devs right now. We're going to see if we can make a permanent fix for that. So you don't have to worry about it. But right now, as of today, October 1st, uh, 2021, you'll have to make that change. Um, always point to 9000 on your Elastic. I'm running TLS, so it's going to be HTTPS, and you're going to point to 9000. You don't point to Kibana on 5601. This is from XOR into Elastic, okay? That's that's your integration piece. Um 
in Logstash, there are if you if you put any kind of files in there, it will automatically suck them in. It doesn't matter the file name. If you so if you were to copy the file and leave it in that directory, it will absorb it at runtime. So keep it clean in there. Um, always show hidden indices inside of uh, the Cabana UI. That trips me up. Um, and there's a lot of hidden ones that you need to you might need to look at to find the index of uh, that you're looking for. And if you and what I did is you have to create index patterns. You have to create the index uh, manually. Uh, I cheated. I went into FileBeat and I just said output it to Elastic right on 9000, and it automatically created the index for me with all the proper fields. And then when I'm done, when it, that's all built out, then I just swung it back to go back to my Elastic uh, to my Logstash. Sorry. So FileBeat. Then I swung FileBeat to go back to Logstash, which is how I want to have it in the, the, the normal state. Okay. So let's get to it. Okay. Uh, so here we are on the host and I will show you that I've already done the git clone. I pulled down the entire folder, uh, docker elk right here, right? And all you do is you go in here and you say docker compose and then you, uh, say up, uh, don't use the dash D if you want to see the output and trust me, you're going to want to see all the, the most verbose information from all these different systems because, uh, there's a lot going on. You have like three different containers talking to each other. Um, you're you're looking for firewall logs. You're making sure things are parsed correctly, making sure there's no errors. So you want it, it, everything as verbose as possible. All right. So after we've uh, stood that up, we can do you know Docker um, uh, container uh, ls, and you can look at your three containers. Um, Antoine has already set up all the ports um, in the uh, the Docker compose file. So as long as you use the TCP ports that you see here today, it should work because he's already punched holes for them and mapped them host to container and all that good stuff, right? Um, so up we are, and then we installed uh, FileBeat. I'm not gonna go into how to install FileBeat on the, the Ubuntu host. It's rather easy, um, but I will show you the config files in question. So how this works is, uh, Antoine has already set up these different folders with config files, and these will get sucked in uh, at runtime when you say docker compose up, okay? So you never have to actually go in the containers and modify any config files. You just modify them uh, here in like, you know, the quote unquote GitHub directory. And every time you spin them up, they get sucked in, all right? So let's just take a look at, you know, log stash, um, here is the logstash comp file that I mentioned uh, on the first slide. You might, you probably want to, if you're running 10.1, you're going to want to grab mine. If you're running uh, was it 9.0, I think, um, you're going to want to grab Eric Youngins. All right. Uh, but it, this is what it looks like. Um, and you can kind of figure out what's happening. So I told you that uh, file beats is going to go over to logstash, right? So this is essentially my listener. And go ahead and use 5044 because, like I said, it's already mapped and it, it works. Okay, you don't need any codec. I commented that out, and I'm not doing um, TLS here. And we tag it on the way in. We filter it. We just do a regex right here. All right, um, because the problem that you're going to see is that if you don't have this config file, all the good data from that syslog message are all in one key called message, and you don't want that. You want it parsed out source IP, destination IP, all that. That's what this gets you. So this is required, right? And then I map all these. These came right from the Palo Alto website. They're right at the very top. Uh, it's very nice that they have it right here in just plain text that you copy and paste. Very easy to work with. Uh, we do a little mutation here and there uh, where we uh, convert you know, things to integer here. It's very cool. When you look at the raw logs, you will see uh, long and lat for um, each event that comes in for like the source IP, uh, which helps for mapping and does some great stuff. All right, and then uh, we do basically the same function twice. We do it once for threat and then, and then another one for traffic. This demo is all about threat. I don't really care about um, you know alerting or, or running a playbook with a traffic log. If it's a threat, that might be interesting. So that's what I really am focused on threat. Here's my output. It's out to Elastic 9200. Ooh, I said 9000 earlier. Whoops. Um, 
Yep, okay, so make note of that. And notice I'm doing standard out here. Again, let's keep it verbose. So, uh, okay, showed you that file. Um, let's see what else is interesting. Uh, yeah, this is all baked in. This all came from Antoine, so we're all set. Um, you don't have to worry about that. So, uh, oh, the file beat. You're going to want to see the file beat. Um, touched it in a while. Um, file beat YAML. So here's my file beat. Um, I am listening 514 on the host. And then there's an output. Uh, where's my output? here to log stash, okay? 5044. And again, if you point to localhost, it, 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 it should all work, right? Because uh, this will get mapped uh, in Docker over to the proper container, all right? All right, now, um, of course, you know how to syslog off your Palo Alto firewall. I'm not gonna get into that. Um, so from here, Okay, let's take a look in Kibana, shall we? Here we see um, logged in. Um, it does come with a default of Elastic with a password of change me that Antoine set up. That that's actually the default of the uh, the application itself. Um, if you change it in the UI here, you will break everything because a lot of those config files in uh, the different containers are referencing the change the change me password. So you will break things. So if you're gonna change it, you gotta do it everywhere. Again, this is a lab, this is not production. Don't do anything that I'm doing in production, of course. This is just for learning. Um, don't forget about this. Uh, always open this one and you're gonna look for your index that's automatically being created um, through the, the, as soon as the data comes in, the system uh, Elastic will automatically create. This is my index here because I have a data stream and this is where all my, my good syslog data is living. Um, go into Cabana. This should be default, but you're going to want to leave the time zone in Elastic. Uh, that's going to be UTC, and you're going to leave that alone. And then at the presentation layer, if you will, at the Cabana layer, we're going to use the time zone of your browser. So I'm an Eastern Standard, so all my times look correct. Let's go make sure we're getting some logs. So, um, of course, you know, you use discover, but I'm already past that. So let's just go right to logs and I'll show you what some Palo Alto logs might look like in Cabana here and, um, real easy to use. I just go here. Um, I could actually pick which fields I wanted to show on that, on this particular page. And I happen to choose these and, um, I can go here click on them, view details. I can actually click on these and add it as a filter, right? And this, this is called a Lucene format. And I'm looking and I'm showing that I have a source user and I have a whole demo around zero trust, but um, this is you know, what you can expect. And then you can hit live and look at live data coming in. All right. So now we come over to XOR. Now it's time to integrate uh, XOR with uh, Elastic. Now you'll see that I've made a copy of this and let me explain. So uh, you go in here and you say fetch incidents and um, you know incident type, that's fine. Again, point it to 9200 on, uh, on SSL like this, right? Um, I'm using the Elastic change me. I'm trusting any cert because it's self-signed. Point it to your index. Remember, I, I showed you we un we slid that toggle to to expose or unhide the indices, and then I found this name. All right, I'm going to filter it with a type threat. That's what I'm interested in, and then you say at timestamp. It must be simple date on this pull down. Nothing else will work. You hit test, and off you go. But there was an issue. So if, if I hover over here you'll see that it's having a hard time uh, parsing 
the, um, the, the, the at timestamp. It is expecting uh, six zeros and there's only three zeros uh, or three digits, sorry, for the, the second field. Um, so we had to come up with a fix. So what you do is you copy the, the um, integration itself. Now you have a copy. Now you can edit. Notice I have a pencil now. Okay, great. I can go in here and you, I modified just that one little field. Let's see if I can't find it. Uh, yeah, let's percent F. I'll just percent. Actually, it's not going to be. It's going to be. Let's see. Right here. Notice. Um, and I put this in the comments in the slide deck. Rewind to go look at this exact format. But you want lower J as in Julia, capital Zulu, and this will work. It does work because you can see that I've pulled two incidents today. Three thirty. And let's take a look again at the config to make sure you got everything set up right. Uh, again, you're pointing it to 9200, um, and it's the same config. I'm just saying time going back for one day, and I'm checking every minute, right? And uh, from there, you should start to have incidents, assuming that you have, uh, you know, type colon threat, right? You should come in here, and here's some of the incidents that have poured in. And you can take a look at what kind of data is in here. Indicators are always automatically parsed out. Um, there shouldn't be. So uh, I'll show you my playbook. It, it's rather, yeah, I just I update the incident name so it looked a little cleaner. You, you saw that, saw some of the other ones. They were a bit messy, so I made it. So it's source user, IP address, and interesting information that I want. It's a deprecated function. That's why you see the triangle, but um, I'm still going to use it. And uh, I do some interesting stuff here. I rasterize the website itself. This is the, so uh, let me explain. So uh, this particular use case, a uh, threat actor or uh, maybe an unsus uh, unsuspecting user went to a bad website. At Palo Alto, we have a bunch of test websites that the, the uh, you know, our IPS engine will automatically pick up. Um, and it's benign, but it's just good for demoing and exercising and showing how it, how it would, would function. In this case, I am rasterizing, basically taking a picture of the website itself. It, it automatically went out and, and uh, the playbook will show you what the website would look like. The reason this is cool is if there's any active links, your SOC analyst can't click on them. It's a JPEG, right? Same thing for phishing emails. We rasterize those so to take away uh, some of those um, malicious URLs. I just did it for giggles. Um, and then here I'm just going out and I'm going to VirusTotal. Say, hey, VirusTotal, what do you know about this test Palo Alto website, right? And I'm showing how I can enrich data. That's what XOR is all about, right? It's doing things automatically for me. This is rather lame. I mean, there's not much to it. I could do so much more, obviously. But the point is, is that we've now integrated XOR with uh, Elastic when we have a full Elk stack and uh, it just works. Any questions, please leave comments and uh, I hope to hear from you. Thank you.